broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ to North America and people around the world. We welcome you to TCT Alive. Our faithful prayer partners are here to take your important calls. So join us today for an inspirational time of interview and song. TCT Alive. Now, join us for this special presentation. Welcome to TCT Alive. Thank you for joining us today. I'd like to start off with a verse from Psalm 139. It's the words of David, and it reads like this. It says, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You know that God has um, given you a unique journey, each and every one of you. He's crafted you with gifts, with talents, with skills, and he's offered you the Holy Spirit to fill you and to bring all those gifts to its fullness through Christ Jesus. And so our prayer for you today is, is during our program that you would discover a Jesus in a very real, vibrant way and that you would choose to live your life to the fullest potential that he has ordained you for. And so if you'd like to join us and, and partner up with TCT, we invite you to do so. And we invite you to be a part of taking the greatest news known to man throughout the world. And if that is you and you would like to partner with us, we invite you to do so. You can send your support to TCT P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. If you are in Canada, it's P.O. Box 1220 for Erie, Ontario, L2A5Y2. It was August 5th, 1988, when a tragedy occurred that took the life of three of my classmates. And here with me today is the mother of Chrissy Baylor, one of the victims in that fatal crash. And so, Susie, we just thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. We thank you for being a part of today's program with us. And, and as tragic as that event was, there, there's mm -hmm. a, a greater story than behind this accident yes. and behind Chrissy's life. And so if you would, right. would you just take us back years when Chrissy was a little girl because she was just a unique girl that boy was tuned into the voice of oh, God Lord. and mm -hmm. heard him and desired his presence in just such a an uncommon way as, right. as a child and so I would like you to, to take us there and, and just describe to us Chrissy describe to, to us her relationship with God and, and just what she was hearing from the Holy Spirit okay um, <clears throat> first when she was little like a year and a half two she was talking really extraordinary as a little child mm -hmm. with sentences and that. And then she began to have uh, dreams and visions and they started way back then, but uh, most likely she was always weeping during that time. And then during the time at night or day or whatever, when it happened, I would wash her down with lukewarm water to get her to come out of the weeping. And then we would lay a lot of times and just talk about mm -hmm. things that she would tell me of the Lord, what he was showing her. So these were dreams? And these were dreams and visions. That even as a small child of four and five, uh, like when she was in kindergarten even, yeah. she would talk about um, how God would show her things. And all, all of it was about her life and how it was going to be lived, mm -hmm. but how also it was going to end. Mm -hmm. um, she knew from little on up uh, that she wouldn't live to be 18. She always told me that, I won't live to be 18, Mama. And um, she always had these dreams and visions and walk and talk with Jesus. And evidently he had explained to her all along how it would be that this is going to come to pass. Because I, you know, it was about, uh, first of all, the tragic accident. She called it a violent accident. And um, then she would say how her body would be misidentified with that of another person. Now, for years, I believe, from little on up to about 11 years old, 
she thought it was between her and I, the misidentity in this accident. Mm -hmm. But then I had an accident where it threw me across the street. After that, um, I took her to a Christian psychologist or pastor in Huntington at the Good Shepherd Church. And I think his name was Pastor Young. And he gave her scriptures and gave her recipe cards to write on. And then after we got home, it was like, that's the only time we had to go. Um, she was all settled after that. It's like the Lord had settled her in to knowing that I wouldn't be the one then in that accident with her. It was uh, of another person. Mm -hmm. So she settled down in that. And then I think um, it was August 3rd on a Wednesday. I'm going to just go right into where in August mm -hmm. when the accident had. Um, she came home and said it was going to be soon. I'm going to die soon, Mom. And then that's at the time when I said, you know, I don't want to hear anymore mm -hmm. because living with that all these years, I was rather emotionally and mentally and I believe spiritually ill, you know, really sick. Because we're going from the time she we're was going from the time that she was the little time she was seven and all this weeping and crying and being awake at nights and all times of the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't have a, a whole night of sleeping for many years. So what is that doing to you as a parent hearing your child describe what well, was her horrible? Death and because I told, I think I remember telling you that, um, you know, I had had a wreck on that Monroe Road going towards home uh, when I was eight and a half months pregnant with her. Mm -hmm. And I thought all these dreams and visions and I called them nightmares because we would weep and she would weep, mm -hmm. you know. So I th think I believed I carried a lot of guilt thinking I am the one that hindered her and, had, and mm -hmm. caused her to have all these. So for years, yeah, I was really unstable. Um, as far as, you know, my home, I think, was uh, dysfunctional because the mother, I was a single parent. I believe that, uh, you know, our home was dysfunctional because of me. Mm -hmm. But yet God was there all this time, see. Mm -hmm. He knew my name. He knew Chrissy's name from the beginning of the foundations. Mm -hmm. And I believe, too, and she believed, this all came from him for a certain time. Mm -hmm. That this, this story, she's always told me, is not my story or hers. It's a God's story. It's not neither one of our story. Mm -hmm. but that she wanted it told so that she could give the message of Christ. Mm -hmm. The untold story of the gospel that we lived. Mm -hmm. That he was always there no matter what we went through. Mm -hmm. You know, in the end, God was still God to us. And, mm -hmm. and that's what brought us through. That's what brought her through to that day that she listened. And God told her that it was going to happen soon. Now, I know a lot of people probably will not want to believe that, but God does give us a word of things that's going to happen, mm -hmm. things that's going to be, if you listen, if you really study and seek the Lord mm -hmm. and listen to him. Yeah. What were some of the details that she would give you? Some of the details was that her organs would be given mm -hmm. during this time, that she would... Um, in fact, the last year and a half or year that she lived, she prayed for a man from our community to get her heart. His name was Dick Martin, and uh, he's the very one that got her heart. I mean, just all kinds of things that she spoke about, what the Lord had spoken, has come to pass, like the misidentity and like how her organs would be given, uh, who would get in her heart. I mean, it's a quite amazing story. And that's the part of the untold story. But yet her story that she wants to proclaim even now, I believe that she's in heaven mm -hmm. as a cloud of witness that Jill was sharing with me this morning, that her main thing was that people know Jesus mm -hmm. and that they be ready for when he's coming because she did tell me, this is part of the story that she told me, that on that day that she came home that once she's gone, um, the Lord will show me and tell me the same message she gave me, that he's coming in my time and my generation. 
and I'm to proclaim it. So, and then to tell people, whomever I talk with, to get ready and be ready mm -hmm. for he's coming. Yeah. And then, you know, I laughed at her during that time. Not laugh, laugh, but um, just, you know, yeah, right, you know. Mm -hmm. God's telling you this stuff, or Jesus told you this stuff. And she said, but it's true, Mom, but I'll be free and in the arms of Jesus. And, and you will be coming out of the bondage of um, the, the sin of chronic fear and depression and everything that you've went through. Mm -hmm. So she knew things that, uh, what child would know that? What, what person mm -hmm. would really know? Yeah. And she wanted to convey to everyone. And like today, I believe she, she's watching somewhere, wherever she's at with Jesus, that this has gone on. Maybe not. I don't know that. But I do know that her message was about the untold story of the gospel of Christ, mm -hmm. that he is always with us. If you don't believe in him, ask God or ask Jesus mm -hmm. to show you, reveal to you, the people that are listening right now, reveal, have him reveal to you who he is, mm -hmm. and he will. And that was, you know, the main thrust of the message of the hour. I believe she would tell me to tell, and the Lord also to tell him that he's coming soon. Mm -hmm. And within, on 1990, on her gravesite, he told me exactly the same things that she had spoken with me about. Mm -hmm. Even the people that I would be with today. Mm -hmm. How would she know that way back then, 25 years ago before she died, mm -hmm. without the Lord telling her who I would be with? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's just quite an amazing, you know, I've held on to this story now for, it's 25 years in August that she passed away and, mm -hmm. you know, everything has come to pass as she told me, mm -hmm. her part in it. And you said she was, there would be a misidentification. Yeah, she so knew she would what? be misidentified in that accident. So she was misidentified with the other girl mm -hmm. and only Chrissy, um, it was said when I found out the news at the donut shop there in Decatur. When I came back from Fort Wayne that night, all these people were at the donut shop, and my children, the other three children, or at least two of them, would meet me there mm -hmm. on a Friday or Saturday night, and this was on a Friday night. And, but when we pulled up, there's all these people, many, many people. I just don't know how many, but you know, hundreds of people standing and waiting on me to get out of that car. And it was my son that came and opened up the car door, and he said, Mama, the, um, I need to tell you that Chrissy was killed tonight. Well, there was two people standing, two men that my eyes went on. One I knew that had to be the chaplain of the jail. Um, I believe his name was Pastor Medford. Um, and I know him from years before that. Mm -hmm. So my eyes went to him. I didn't know the little guy that stood beside him, but he was the acting coroner that night. Mm -hmm. His name was Gail Arms. And so they came to the car and I asked them three times during this time if I could go identify her. Because my th thoughts went to her years of telling me yeah. she would be misidentified and she wouldn't die mm -hmm. until her organs and everything was being able to be mm -hmm. used. So, you know, my constant thing was let me go identify her. But they said no, that it was in my own best interest that I not do that. So they didn't allow me to go do that, to identify her. So where was, so when you were told that your daughter is mm -hmm. dead, it was really not your daughter. Right. It was the other girl. So it where was, was Chrissy? Girl. Chrissy was laying in the ICU mm -hmm. or emergency and then ICU at Lutheran Hospital. No, excuse me, the Parkview Hospital. Mm -hmm. Because my idea when we all got home it was time for bed. We'd already made the arrangements already at my mother's mm -hmm. with the pastor and everybody for the funeral, mm -hmm. when and where and all the particulars. But my thoughts when we, I got home, all night long I kept thinking when I leave the funeral home the next day, my girls, the other girls, called Paula and Kathy, was going to go do their fingernails and that and prepare her hair and stuff. Mm -hmm. and my niece. Becky, and I just remember that when I, I'm done with them at the funeral home, 
I'm heading to Fort Wayne because mm -hmm. I'm going to check that girl out. I believe it was Chrissy. Mm -hmm. I believed in my heart her story of God and how he mm -hmm. spoke with her, that that yeah. was her up at the Parkview Hospital. I'm not, mm -hmm. yeah. So how so, did you go? No, because during the time that they were doing the other girl's hair mm -hmm. and preparing her fingernails and that, Mark, Jan of the funeral home came over, and I don't know if I'm supposed to give names, but he came in with a plastic bag of Chrissy's stuff, said, here, Susie, these are the remains that we uh, got from Chrissy mm -hmm. at the accident. It was a billfold, I believe, and keys, and a class ring, and I don't know what else, monies. And I just told him that's not Chrissy's. Those aren't anything of, of Chrissy's. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they have to be. We took them off of her. Mm -hmm. But I, for some reason, I keep saying, I believed if I would have wept and screamed or whatever emotions that I really wanted to leave out mm -hmm. would have came, I always had a fear that they would lock me up. Hmm. And then I wouldn't be able to be, you know, for the arrangements or anything with Chrissy. I was afraid mm -hmm. they, yeah, that was my fear all those years. Mm -hmm. That if, when this happened, that I would mm -hmm. be so distraught that, yeah. So I made myself to mm -hmm. really fake it till I made it through. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, another time when we were still talking and down there, there was a couple counselors there with me. One was Rita Polovic at Decatur Counseling Center. And um, anyway, she, they all sat with me, but the girls were still in, you know, fixing up the other girl as Chrissy, but uh, Mark Jan came back in, and he says, Susie, I, I have something to tell you. And he spoke that the other girl just died. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how my reactions was. I, I believe I was calm, cool, collected. I don't know how except for the grace of God that held me. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I just remember, I think my heart sunk, or I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I really sank back into that chair knowing that Christine really just now died. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really emotional during that time. Because the family, the other, the other family, family actually decided to pull. Our, is the one that, yeah. The pull well, rough life support. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And they signed, and what was neat, that God had everybody in place, no matter yeah. what went wrong, God was still the one in control. Mm -hmm. He had everything in place that, she was able to give her organs. Yeah. And then I, the story that I have from Mr. Martin <clears throat> is that he was ready for a heart transplant. And it was my own Dr. Rich that I have uh, for my heart mm -hmm. that went to bat for him because I think at a certain age you can't get a transplant. Okay. And he was in his 60s, late 60s. Okay. And anyway, the, I believe also that God had it in line for them to give the organs and he got her heart. But he spoke how, I think they had one heart for him, but it was too big for the cavity. Mm. So they had to put him back in his room. And I remember him telling, this is the story that he told, that he saw two girls descend into heaven and he knew right then he was gonna get one of their hearts. Mm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing, yeah. Mm. And he lived on I think ter 13 years longer wow. with, the, with the new heart. And he ended up, I think, dying of the cancer. But mm -hmm. had, what a wonderful man he was for the community. Mm -hmm. He always had a great, um, you know, great testimony himself. You know, I, I think when we had talked earlier, I mean, there's such a, a great message of forgiveness right. in here as well. In I mean, here. Yeah, for, you know, going through what, your family had gone through and the misidentification mm -hmm. and the choices that were made that were really your choices to be made. And, right. and um, there was just a lot of forgiveness right. extended, which... Uh, that you have to do daily. Mm -hmm. It's a moment by moment experience with the Lord, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, he gives us that. He gives us that mm -hmm. ability if we want it, if we want to truly seek him mm -hmm. for that forgiveness. Yeah, I needed to, you know, forgive the driver. I need to, you know, forgive everything that I could forgive. Mm -hmm. 
But at the same time, when I held on to that story, it's like, okay, what's there to forgive? This was my thoughts. Mm -hmm. What's there to forgive when everything that she ever spoke about, her whole life's goals, mm -hmm. came with all this happening? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. God is so amazing. And I remember always having God in a box. I never, you know, some people do, well, a lot of us do. Keep him in a box, but he is so great that I believe even today as I'm speaking, he would tell people to un, undo the top of the box and let me out. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a like a Jack in the Box song. Mm -hmm. I used to sing that at home. You know, open the lid and let me out. You know, and that. <laughs> you had said that mm -hmm. um, one of the things Chrissy would tell you is that okay. she is dying in order to save you, to rescue you. From right? little on from up, she would tell me she was born mm -hmm. to die for me, to rescue me, to give me life and hope. Mm -hmm. And I would say, no, Jesus is the one that died for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I was raised in church. I was raised my years in a home yeah. of holiness. I still remember the feeling of holiness, even though we're not to go back to that as feelings. But I can still sense that holiness from where I was raised in my mom and dad's home. So what has been, the, what's happened in your life? I mean, the, have you been able to find freedom from so the fear, the bondage of fear and, and depression? All that came. And, yeah. All that came um, six months within her death. Mm -hmm. um, this is amazing. God does this. It's not me. For six months before I had the healing, mm -hmm. the spiritual healing and I believe physical and everything, emotional, mm -hmm. um, when I would go into church on Sunday morning, this big cross is up in the front and I would see Jesus in a vision like this and he had Chrissy draped in his arms. Mm -hmm. Now I know it was just for me, mm -hmm. but it was real. I mean, God gave me that, I believe that. And I was so messed up with emotions, like I said, and mentally ill and spiritually ill, mm -hmm. all from all them years, that I believe that during that time, then see, I got to where I had no feeling. I really literally died, I believe, spiritually and, and emotionally, mm -hmm. because I came to the place where I was only like a mechanical person going about doing my business, but still just mechanically inclined. I had no emotions, mm -hmm. like a love and a hate or anxiety or anything, just like a, a mechanical person. Mm -hmm. Then in February, when I went down to the altar, I remember the Lord just saying, go and stand. And so I went and stood. And then when the pastor came to ask me, you know, what can I help you with? I went to the altar and, and bowed down. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying, I believe I need saved. I believe I wasn't truly saved all these mm -hmm. years. I believe I had like a spirit of religion on me mm -hmm. and that I really don't know Jesus the way I need to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, people will say, Susie, that's not true. Mm -hmm. But I believe in my spirit because um, after that, I began to come back into life and yeah. my emotions came. And I had, um, at that time, God gave me, I believe, um, a mind that was steadfast, or a, mm -hmm. what do you call it, a sound mind, mm -hmm. his mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> you know, Chrissy had told wow. you to write a book. Okay. And this story mm -hmm. uh, would reach the world. The world. She said this story, God told her that this story, untold story about the gospel of Christ, mm -hmm. Uh, what we know it to be, how he did on our lives, mm -hmm. would go to the world and that um, he was going to use it for many people mm -hmm. to come to him and to be healed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people need just spiritual healing mm -hmm. and healing of even heart disease like I've had. I've had heart disease and I'm being healed. I know that. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Lord spoke with me that when this is all like today, I believe with, if the book comes about or whatever, how God's going to use it, this story, 
that I, he told me that I would have a divine healing from head to the bottom of my soul, toes, my mm -hmm. feet, and that I would walk in divine healing. Mm -hmm. So, but she always said that this story is going to be one of the one of the greatest stories ever told on this side of the heavens. So, lots of people wanted to interview you and wanted to do this mm. story. And so, why why now? Because you have written the book. I have right? written. Mm -hmm. um, not published, but sitting. No. It's written. So why now, you feel? Well, at first I didn't know that. Why now? Why, yeah. why not way back? Because I set up my typewriter and my Bible after I had that spiritual healing, mm -hmm. probably for a year or two years. I didn't hardly do a lot. Mm -hmm. I went into the Bible because I learned about the Holy Ghost baptism through mm -hmm. that. And I just wanted to study to yeah. see what I'm to do. And I would write during mm -hmm. that time. I would write all that. Now, it's been burned. I, um, somebody had gotten a hold of the manuscript and, and had burned it all. And so down through the years, I've written more mm -hmm. or started it over or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, she just said the story would go to the world. Susie has our So this, uh, the, to me, this is that part yeah. that it's going to go to the world, you know, what through TCT. You, right, right. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah, well, it will. <laughs> it's what do you want as our time comes to a close? Okay. What would you want uh, the viewers to take away from Chrissy's story? I would want the viewers to get into their Bible. And if they're saved, unsaved, unhealthy, anything that hinders their way mm -hmm. to God, there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So to ask Jesus to reveal himself in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. God is a great God, and he expects us. Yeah. He expects us as his children, or even before we're his children, to ask for great and mighty things. Mm -hmm. Because we have not, because we ask not. Mm -hmm. So I would ask the people to take time to search him out. Mm -hmm. Let him show you the way. Let him show you who you are in him. Mm -hmm. If you don't know him, please, I'm asking for you to get saved yeah. today. Because we aren't guaranteed today, tomorrow. No, we're not guaranteed for tomorrow yeah. or even a minute from now. If I walk yeah. out and get hit <laughs> by a car or a bus or just fall over from heart disease, you know, but I don't believe that because I'm believing what Jesus told me. He's going to come in my time and my generation. So, Susie, thank <laughs> you so just, much for so, coming today. Appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Wow. Again, if you would like to support TCT, <laughs> we invite you to do so. TCT, P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, wow. 62959. Thank you for joining us. Yeah.